here I am. Now, uh, this is um, <clears throat> September the 23rd, 2003, and uh, I'm dressed up in really old rags because I'm going to be doing polishing, which is really a dirty operation. <clears throat> I've already polished on this, uh, on my mirror, uh, for about nine hours, and uh, I'm almost finished. The, the pits are almost gone, as far as I could tell, by the, by the bright light against the dark background test on the mirror over here. I just take a look. I think you can see me. And the, the light bulb in the ceiling is, is up there just above the camera. And by looking at the reflection in this, you could, you could see a very slight haze around the bulb here, near, especially near the edge of the mirror, but the rest seems pretty good. Probably another few hours polishing, maybe two or three hours might be enough, but it might not be, but I'm willing to go a little longer if necessary to get the pits out. I did a really thorough job, I think, on fine grinding with the number nine micron abrasive, well, with nine micron abrasive, that is. And um, <clears throat> so this is the pitch lap. Uh, I will have already explained to you using the still photos with my um, digital camera that I transferred to the video off the computer how to how I made the pitch lap. It's too difficult, too nasty a job to videotape myself doing it and too time consuming in that. So uh, it took about five days to make the pitch lap. Like not entire days, but five days off, of, like parts of five days you might say, while I was letting the pitch cool and stuff like that and making the mold and so mold for the for the strips of pitch and so on. So anyway, um, you're seeing the pitch lap. It's already been trimmed trimmed twice with this little blade right here. I'll show you the blade. This is, I got this at the home hardware store. It's just a plain blade. Well, I think it's one and five eighths inch wide and it was quite sharp and you just ram it down like along the edge of each square like Textural says in his book to um, trim the squares off after they start to fill out which is usually after about four or five hours of polishing. Okay, and you have to make sure that the channels don't between the squares don't close the way the, where they touch each other. You'll have quite a time getting them cleared out then. <clears throat> and um, uh, I also, um, let's see, I'll show you how I put this on now. Uh, by the way, I used those pieces of aluminum foil you see up there. Some of them were used to cold press the uh, pitch lap. That is, I put a piece of, of uh, 18 inch wide foil, which is just barely wide enough to cover the squares along this side where they're a little bit narrower. This is an 18 and a half inch diameter tool. And then you put that a nice smooth sheet of it and clean and everything on top of the, the pitch squares when they're first glued. I glued them on with the candle flame method, like the textural says. And I used a little, uh, like I had a, a, claw, a piece of paper towel that was soaked with turpentine. And as I went to glue each square on, I just rubbed once or twice over the area where I was going to glue it to make sure that there was a thin layer of mo a moist turpentine on the glass, heated the square with a candle, and then stuck it on using um, a long a pair of vice grip needle nose pliers so that I wouldn't have burned my hands on the square and then just pressed it down for a few seconds and it stuck the squares have stuck real well because of the action of the, the, the turpentine uh, uh, on the bare glass the, and I also warmed the glass a little bit with a heating pad my mother's heating pad wrapped in foil before I uh, I put the squares on, hoping that it would heat the glass up enough that the squares would would have a better uh, would stick better to the glass because of the warm glass as well. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm not really exactly what you call a public speaker, so I'm sort of bumbling along trying to explain what I've done in that. But uh, anyway, as long as you get the idea, that's the main thing. Uh, so um, the lap, as you could see, looks fairly even. It turned out pretty good. I'm really quite impressed with the nice way it turned out. And the squares have trimmed pretty well. Once in a while, a little chip came out of a corner or something like that, but that's not too significant in a large mirror this size. Usually you end up with slight defects in the mirror anyway in a big one this size, no matter how carefully you polish. So now I'm going to actually show you how I polish. I'm looking at the clock over there because I like to keep, my, keep track of the time I polish and that. And so what I've got here... You know, this is the uh, this is a, an old jar of barnesite or barnsite. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. You spell it like if you pronounce it like it's spelled, it would it would be barnesite, and it's a mixture of 
several rare earth oxides. That's all I know about it, but it's a very, very good high-speed polishing agent, and it's sort of an orange color, and uh, uh, there's, I don't have much left, and it's hard to buy nowadays, so you can see there's about a quarter or three-eighths inch layer of the stuff at the bottom of the jar, and then there's some fluid above it. That's just distilled water with a few drops of dishwashing detergent, more than a few actually mixed in, and uh, what I do is when I start polishing, I just take some of this and kind of scrape the bottom of it with a paintbrush. This is a clean paintbrush dedicated especially to this job and I just dab a little bit on there. I use a thinner mixture of it when I'm at, when, by the way when, when, the, when the polishing gets stiff and it dries out which usually lasts after the first bunch of fluid lasts 20 or 25 minutes and then after that about every 10 or 15 minutes I have to add more. All you have to do is decenter the mirror by about two inches or three inches and just do the squares that stick out and then move it back and decenter it the other way and do the other side and then that actually um, is all you need to do. You don't have to take the mirror on and off all the time like you do with fine grinding. You could just decenter it and add some more and then just keep going. And I try not to keep it decentered any longer than necessary because the mirror will sink down into the pitch when it's decentered and make a little ridge where the edge of the mirror hits the pitch square. So try not to keep it decentered any longer than necessary. So just adding a little layer here that I'm sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel so to speak as I get this stuff out. That's a little bit thin so I'll just scrape it a little harder. I like to make sure there's some actual, you can see that, I don't know whether you can see the color of this stuff, it's sort of a orangish brown color. I want to make sure there's a, a really decent amount of the actual polishing material. Actually the polishing is most efficient when the when the, the polishing agent is, is not very thick. You know, it's almost, the, the tool is almost dry and there's hardly any of the actual polishing agent on. That's when it really polishes very fast. But then the frictional drag becomes almost intolerable. So you run the risk of cracking the pitch squares off and stuff like that. So there's sort of a happy medium. I just, I'm not worried about being all that efficient with it. And uh, so I'm a little bit clumsy of, of do, clumsier than normal doing this because I'm a little apprehensive about the camera running. But uh, I thought it was my duty to show people what actually happens during polishing. Just going to make sure I add a little thicker mixture of this to the last squares. I'm adding quite a bit, as you can see, to start out with. But as you, uh, well, you don't need to add too much when you're actually, like, just a, a blob of water just to the outer squares to get out from the edge of the tool, like I mentioned. I think I've got all the squares covered. There we are. And you'll see that I'm going to be very cautious, very cautious. You only need to take them, put the mirror on once before the polishing session, and then you take, by the way, I keep this jar sealed with the brush on top of the jar when I'm not using it to keep the water inside from evaporating. Uh, another thing, too, is on the ceiling there's a great big, I don't know whether you can see it, a great big sheet of plastic covering my whole work area. That keeps any, any, any large particles of grit on the floorboards from falling down onto the work polishing area. When I'm not when I'm not polishing, I use some some sort of support structures here that I made just out of cardboard, and uh, put a sheet of aluminum foil over this just to keep any large particles of dust off it. And the, the foil does not actually contact the, the pitch. There's one square that I missed there, so I'll just add a little solution to it here. So that keeps the dust off it when I'm not actually using it. But it's not actually, the foil doesn't actually, it's that sheet of foil right there at the top, which is now turned upside down. No, I'm not going to talk while I'm doing this. You'll see me do it. I'm going to be very cautious about moving this thing over here. <clears throat> I usually put it on this side because I can... My fingers can get a better grip where the squares are narrower, right along this axis right here. Okay. Now the, the moisture was enough that it spread out over the whole squares. I'm just going to move it very slightly. I don't like to cold press. I do a little bit just for, uh, oh, maybe a few seconds or a minute or so. Uh, I, with my 26-inch mirror, I tried cold pressing, and the thing stuck. And it top popped. It was a terrible job. I had to pry it apart with all my strength. 
It took a few pitch squares with it when it popped off. So I don't cold press anymore. The, the pitch conforms so quickly to the mirror surface when you start polishing, especially when you're just trying to generally polish to remove pits, that uh, I don't think you really need to cold press, especially if you're polishing for a couple of hours at a time. Okay, so just that little bit of sitting there for, a, a, oh, maybe 30 seconds or so is enough with this heavy mirror to make the pitch flow and conform pretty, pretty closely to the surface, but it's not long enough for the fluid to dry out. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna, I usually start out like holding this this way and pushing it this way. That's the way this guy recommends that wrote articles on large telescope mirrors and how to make them. And this, this enables me to get a good start. And I, it, it doesn't work very smoothly at first, so I usually just start off with a few small spokes, just here and there, and as I rotate to break it in. I'm rotating it around the barrel to the left, like clockwise, because the wedge is shaped that way. And turning it this way tends to tighten the wedge up on the tool, which holds the tool in place on top of the barrel. So that way, when that happens, I... Uh, don't have to worry about the tool coming loose because it takes a tremendous amount of force to polish as you can see it's not like fine grinding there's a lot of friction there you can see it's jerking around a little too swaying from side to side which it doesn't do after it gets broken in in a few minutes I usually polish eight or ten double strokes in each spot which I'll be doing it just takes a while to get broken in my left arm is a little sore because I was polishing yesterday for an hour and a half. The longest I've polished in any one session so far is four and a half hours. I don't know how I managed that, but I was a bit, my muscles were a little bit stiff the next day. It gets you into shape in a hurry. Yes, now it's starting to break in. You see it's polishing a little more evenly. I, I generally use a mixture of long and short strokes, just like I did with the fine grinding. So anywhere from a length from slightly over one-third diameter to down to just two or three inches long. I try and intersperse them so as to make a law of averages work for me. You notice I rotate around the barrel just like with the fine grinding and then I also rotate the mirror a little farther so that I'm getting a new diameter of the mirror polishing on a new diameter of the tool with each set of W strokes. See? There we go. Starting to, starting to loosen up a little bit now. It does make an audible sound, like a swishing sound. If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear it. Uh, I hope this camera is running. I also have a side-to-side -side movement, lateral movement, so it makes a genuine W pattern. I could use a little bit longer stroke, now it's starting to break in for the date. The one guy that wrote the article on, on telescope making for large mirrors recommended that you not polish for any more than about 15 minutes at a time because it can be very hard in your ligaments and tendons and muscles in your arms and shoulders and he's absolutely right but with me I find that the continuity of the polishing seems to be better if you can go at least an hour so the barn sight has much more frictional drag than the, than the rouge. I've discovered that with other mirrors too, so it's actually harder to use, but it polishes so much faster that it's probably worth the extra effort. I haven't actually started counting yet because I'm, I'm talking away while I'm working, but now that I'm getting into the rhythm, I'll start counting a little bit. I make about eight to start out with while it's real hard. By the way, you notice that I'm polishing by, you know, the grip here and pushing there. After you polish for, I polish for an hour or so, I find that I could use the old method I used with my 12 inch many years ago. You put your hands on the top like this, and the friction, see it's, I'm a little, it's a little slippery now, but this smooth glass and the friction it makes with the palm of your hands is enough that it'll pull the mirror back and forth. I don't know whether that's a better way to do it or not, but it seems more natural to me to do it like this. See, just pushing it back and forth like that. Now my hands are slipping, but after a half an hour to an hour of polishing, they won't do that. It'll tend to grip. All of a sudden, I don't know whether the lap gets broken in or what, but right now, I have to do it the way the guy recommended, which is this way. 